हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माय नेम इज अंकित मलिक अ पीएमआरएफ एम फेलो फ्रॉम आई टी वी एच यू सो टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट नैनो पार्टिकल्स इट्स सिंथेसिस कैरेक्टराइजेशन एंड डेटा प्रोसेसिंग सो इन दिस प्रेजेंटेशन वी विल लुक इनटू द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ नैनो पार्टिकल्स मेथड्स फॉर सिंथेसाइजिंग नैनो पार्टिकल्स टेक्निक्स फॉर कैरेक्टराइजिंग नैनो पार्टिकल्स डेटा प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ नैनो पार्टिकल्स बेस्ड एक्सपेरिमेंट्स so nano particles are particles with a size range of typically 1 to 100 nanometers they can be made of variety of materials and are incredibly small they are too small to be seen with naked eyes and are only visible with advanced microscope nano particles exhibit unique and often enhanced properties due to their small size and high surface to volume ratio which can differ significantly from those of their bulk counterparts these structures can be engineered from a variety of materials including metals metal oxides polymers and many more the properties of nanoparticles are strongly influenced by factors such as size its shape composition and surface characteristics as a result they have found applications in various fields including medicines electronics energy and material science so types of delivery systems So conventional drug delivery system like ointments tablets capsules syrups orally consumption of tablets capsules or syrups damaged by enzymatic reactions and lower ph environment other one is uncontrolled drug delivery systems controlled release drug delivery system like hydrogel erodible material polymer matrix degradable materials this system is fronting as a drug aggregation due to large size of matrices delay in release time less soluble and less targeted drug delivery system so the next one is nano medicine based drug delivery system nano medicine is target specific it goes and bind to a target specific site and release the drug without damaging any healthy cells like gold nano particles carbon nano tubes liposomes dendrimers so types of nano particles there are three types of nano particles polymeric and organic and lipidic so polymeric nanoparticles polymeric nanoparticles are biocompatible biodegradable like made up of chitosan human serum albumin or bovine serum albumin and it plays a prominent role in therapeutic and receptor mediated drug delivery system like polymerosome dendrimer polymer micellar and nanospheres based on the preparation of their method they are shaped like nano capsules and nano spheres with improved stability and in organic <coughs> nano particles like silicon nano particle quantum dot nano particle quantum dots iron oxide nano particles and gold nano particles in in organic nano particles they are kind of nano scale materials with new properties which are typically composed of two or more in organic materials with the different properties or physical or met uh chem me chemical methods so the last third one is lipidic based like liposome lipidic nanoparticles emulsion so <coughs> lipidic based nano materials system represents one of the most promising colloidal carriers for bioactive organic materials these nano particles can transport hydrophobic and hydrophilic molecules display very low or no toxicity and increase the time of drug action by means of prolonged half life and a controlled release of the drug so <laughs> properties of nano particles so targeting ligands nano particles can target to polymers small molecules nucleic acids protein pro peptides and antibodies surface charge its surface chemistry surface chemistry of the nano particles its surface charge could be positive negative based on the material used for the preparation of nano particles nano particles may have surface functionality depending upon the functional group attached to the surface of the nano particles like ns2 och3 carboxylic acid also this functionality makes the nano particles uh, makes them hydrophobic or hydrophilic according to the nature of the function uh, functional group attached to the surface of nano particles so its next one is composition nano particles are of different types and may be composed of different materials like quantum dot metallic dendrimer virus micellar polymer particles liposomes nano shell silica or iron oxides
then physical properties physical properties of nanoparticles also may vary like its shape like spherical cubical triangle and rod shaped its porosity roughness rigidity and its mechanical strength methods for synthesizing nanoparticles so there are three types of synthesis of nanoparticles first is chemical synthesis which involves the controlled formation of nanoscale materials through chemical reactions second one is physical synthesis this method is generally do not involve chemical reactions but rather relies on techniques like evaporation condensation and physical deposition and the third technique is biological synthesis biological synthesis of nanoparticles is also known as biofabrication or green synthesis nowadays it involves the use of living organisms such as bacteria fungi plants or even their extracts to produce nanoparticles with specific properties so now we'll look at it into a deep manner chemical synthesis physical method and biological synthesis in chemical synthesis these reactions involves the use of reducing agents to convert metal ions into metal atoms or oxidizing agents to oxidize metal atoms back to metal ions the choice of reducing or oxidizing agent depends on the specific synthesis and desired properties of the nanoparticles so there are some common methods of the synthesis of nanoparticles chemically like sol gel method chemical precipitation hydrothermal synthesis chemical vapor deposition and emulsion <coughs> techniques so physical method in physical method the most common physical method for synthesizing nanoparticles is ablation laser ablation so in laser ablation a high po laser power is used to vaporize a target material which then condenses to form nanoparticles the laser ablation technique allows the precise control over particle size and composition in which metal is reacted with the solvent and leads to a different shape and size of the nanoparticles so there are some common method of physical <coughs> synthesis are physical vapor deposition sputtering magnetron sputtering vapor condensation chemical vapor condensation uh, flame synthesis spark discharge electron beam evaporation and the third one is biological synthesis in biological synthesis the culture medium or the extract of the organism is mixed with the metal precursor solution the bioactive compounds represent in the organism's extract which act as a reducing and capping agent facilitating the reduction of metal ions into the nanoparticles nowadays it is also been called as a green synthesis of nanoparticles so now we will look some examples of the preparation of nanoparticles with different synthesis methods so we have physical biological and chemical methods so in physical methods there are some examples of nanoparticles from high energy ball milling methods inert gas condensation pulse vapor deposition method laser pyrolysis flash spray pyrolysis electro spraying melt mixing method and from biological methods we have microorganism assisted biogenesis bio templates assisted biogenesis plant extracts assisted biogenesis and from chemical methods there are some sol gel synthesis micro emulsion technique hydrothermal synthesis pyrolol synthesis chemical vapor synthesis and plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition so in this metal nanoparticles are the most common nanoparticles which are, have been synthesized from different types of nanoparticles so moving ahead so nanoparticles characterization techniques so and this will look for uv visible spectrophotometer dynamic light scattering zeta potential measurement ftir fourier transform and fried spectroscopy x ray refraction scanning electron microscope sem tem transmission electron microscope high resolution transmission electron microscope energy dispersive spectroscopy atomic force microscopy inductively coupled plasma spectroscopy and drummond spectroscopy so in uv visible spectrophotometry so this is the instrument of uv visible spectrophotometer and this is a laser which is uv uv laser used for the spectrophotometer so in uv spectroscopy 
it measures the absorption of light by a sample at a specific wavelength within the uv and visible range it is used to determine the concentration of nanoparticles in a solution each type of nanoparticles has characteristic absorption properties as you can see here by measuring the absorbance as at specific wavelengths the concentration of nanoparticles can be estimated using beer lambert beer's law which relates to the absorbance to concentration so in this for uv uv, UV visible spectrophotometer the sample must be in a liquid form so moving ahead dynamic light scattering it is also called particle sizer in layman language we can say particle sizing so dls dls dynamic light scattering dls is a direct determination of the particle size in the solution so this is the malvern zeta sizer instrument this is the cuvette which we use for the malvern zeta sizer and this is the result and the format result came so we can see here average size of the particle is 65.18 which is less than 100 which is an ideal size of a nanoparticles and pda is 0.146 and the ideal range of pda is near to 0 0.100 so it defines the polar dispersity index so dynamic light scattering is also known as photon correlation spectroscopy this is a technique that primarily measures the brownian motion of the macromolecule in a solution that arises due to bombardment from solvent molecules and relates this motion to the size of particles it measures the hydrodynamic diameter of the particle but it does not give any idea or information about particle shape or morphology for particle size or morphology we do cement tem and other microscopy techniques zeta potential measurement with the same instrument of dls we can measure zeta potential so the difference between normal zeta sizer and zeta potential is the difference of cuvette in dls we can use normal cuvette but in zeta potential we'll use the cuvette with positive and negative electrode and capillary also so zeta potential is the charge that develops at the interface between a solid surface and its liquid medium stability of the nanoparticles can be studied by zeta potential measurement the zeta potential of the particle is the overall charge that the particle acquires in a particular medium and the zeta potential depends on the ph and electrolyte concentration of the particular material and these are the zeta sizer equipments like this cuvette and all zeta potential mainly depends on the stabilizing agent as well as the coating or capping agent whatever the capping or coating agent we are using the charge depends on that particular polymer or that material the magnitude of the zeta potential gives an indication of the potential stability of the colloidal system likewise if all the nanoparticles have large zeta potential they will repel each other and there is dispersion stability and if the particles have low zeta potential values that there is no force to prevent the particles coming together then there will be a dispersion instability so we have some range for the zeta potential value the how stable it is how unstable it is so from minus 10 to plus 10 it will be considered as highly unstable and from minus 20 to plus 20 it will be considered as relatively stable and minus 30 to plus 30 it will consider it as moderately stable but more than minus 30 or more than plus 30 it the nanoparticles will be considered as a highly stable nanoparticles likewise in result we can say the zeta potential is 49.9 so 49.9 plus 49.9 is a highly stable nanoparticles FTIR Fourier Transformed Infrared Spectroscopy FTIR provides valuable information about the molecular composition, functional groups and chemical bonding of the nanoparticles. So first we'll know about the sample preparation of the FTIR. So basically we have a uh, nanoparticle in liquid form. We'll freeze dry that liquid sample to solid sample. Then mix that solid sample with KBR to form KBR pellet. Then briefly, uh, we took uh, we take a uh, one eighth part of the solid sample on a micro spatula and about 0.25 to 0.50 teaspoon of kbr mix thoroughly in a mortar while grinding with the pestle if the sample is in large crystal grind that sample separately before adding to the kbr so it is based on the principle 
where all the infrared spectroscopies act on the principle that when ir radiations infrared radiation passes through a sample some of the radiation is absorbed the radiation that passes through the sample is recorded ftr can identify functional groups present on the nanoparticle surface or within their matrix the absorption band is in the ftr spectrum correspond to specific vibration of different chemical bonds so for we can we have an example of chitosan folate confirmed by the by analyzing the ftr spectra of folic acid and chitosan folate so so we have a table for the wave number ranges for the common functional group if the peak position lies at this range this functional group or chemical bond is present at that position likewise this 3 Five double zero to one thousand. This all the functional group or chemical bond is present. If the peak came in this range, so moving ahead, XRD, X-ray diffraction. X-ray provide information about the crystal structures, crystal size, crystal lattice parameters, and phase composition of these materials. XRD works by irradiating. a material with incident x rays and then measuring the intensities and scattering angles of the x rays that leave the material here we have an example of the xrd spectra of some nanoparticles see uh, i have given the number a b c d the xrd spectra of the a and b showed broad peaks which revealed the amorphous nature of the nanoparticles on the other hand similarly sharp peaks have Appeared in the XRD spectra of the C spectra at three thirty one point eight forty five point five fifty six point four sixty six point three seventy five point three eighty four point four with a lesser intensity, which revealed their semi-crystalline characteristics. If they have uh, more sharp peaks in a single spectrum, it defines the semi-crystalline nature of a nanoparticle. Likewise, in the D spectrum. It showed broad peaks and numerous well-defined sharp peaks. It is also semi-crystalline nature of the nanoparticles. So, the types of the sample required for XRD, drop-casted film and powder are required for the XRD spectra. SEM scanning electron microscope. So this is a SEM instrument. SEM provides detailed information about the morphology and size of nanoparticles. It allows us to visualize the surface structure and shape of nanoparticles, whether they are spherical, rod-shaped, or irregular in shape. It reveals the surface texture and roughness of the nanoparticles. So the sample preparation technique for SEM. Sample preparation of SEM is done by drop casting method, in which a drop of liquid nanoparticles is casted on a glass slide. followed by evaporation of solvent and at last only nanoparticles left on glass slides this is the principle of scanning electron microscope the sem is an instrument that produces a largely magnified image by using electrons instead of light to form an image a beam of electrons is produced at the top of the microscope by an electron gun and the electron beam follows a vertical path through the microscope which is held within a vacuum So this is a sample holder of a scanning electron microscope. Here we paste our glass slides. Then carbon coating has been done before the starting before starting the characterization. So the this is the these are some same image of nanoparticles. See how spherical, how regularly dispersed nanoparticles has EDS energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy. EDS is coupled with SEM to provide elemental composition information. EDS identify the chemical elements present in the nanoparticles and their distribution across the sample. Likewise, we can see here in the first graph, copper, carbon, chlorine, and silver has been identified. Same in the second one, carbon, oxygen, silver, and copper has been identified in the nanoparticle. HR10 High Resolution Transmission Electron Microscope. So this is a visualization of HR10 instrument. TEM provides high resolution images that allow us to visualize the size. shape structure and distribution of nanoparticles at the atomic or nanometer scale this is a copper tem grid which is used for the characterization of nanoparticles through hr tem this is a preparation of copper tem grid samples the liquids uh, nanoparticle samples has been drop casted on copper tem grid then it is dried down 
then the only uh, nanoparticles is left and the rest solvents get evaporated so tem works with the high voltage electron beam to create the image where the electron gun is placed at the top which produces the electron that travels through the vacuum tube tem allows us to observe the lattice structure of nanoparticles and identify their crystallographic phases the diffraction patterns obtained from tem images provide valuable information about the arrangement of atoms within the nanoparticles helping us to determine their crystallinity and orientation of the nanoparticles so here are some uh, tem images of the nanoparticles with the size range less than 100 nanometers see how crystal clear they are afm atomic force microscopy so this is a visualization of atomic force microscope instrument afm provides high resolution topographical and surface property information by scanning a sharp probe over the surface of a sample while measuring forces between the probe and the sample so this is the sample preparation of afm it is same likewise afm sample preparation so this is a scanning probe of afm here a tip is attached to a cantilever which moves up and down and responds to forces of attraction or repulsion with the sample surfaces so movement of the cantilever is detected by laser and photo detector so here are some uh, 2d and 3d images of the afm it also provides 3d topographical information it can measure local mechanical properties of nanoparticles such as stiffness elasticity and addition of forces so thank you so much if you guys have any question or query you can directly ask me in comment section thank you thank you so much